concerning purposes of the Dead Body Act, I believe that the modified form of 2060.30, modified form of 2072 for immigration regarding real property, modified form of 2060.30 regarding FOIA and FOIA denials, the assignments of names and supporting corpuses of Republican appointed courts of hearing. So as additional trustee, good morning. Again, I just want to thank those who are here for your, for your patience this evening as the board was conducting um, earlier board business. We are thrilled to recognize several individual and um, organizational honorees this evening. And the last 16 months certainly conjure up a variety of emotions. Um, some like fear and frustration, but other emotions uh, such as hope. on this, this evening for our very special recognition um, because courage and hope provided by our partnership with the honor, honorees 
this evening help them meet all the needs that flow to us through WBISD. And so we're pausing this evening to recognize distinguished members of the community who served at the front lines and shoulder to shoulder with us so that learning can continue to flourish in Deer Creek ISD during the pandemic. And so thank you and congratulations to CCISD's 2021 Community Partners of the Year, Moral Herman and UT MP. CCISD committee and their close advisory role on an ongoing basis um, to their early provision of vaccine for CD, CCISD nurses and then all staff. These actions had a, a great uh, effect on our ability to anticipate and mitigate challenges to protect the public health and benefits of our community. And really, I cannot, it's hard to express in words the gratitude um, that, that we, we feel, but we wanted to do that. And so it's really with great warm appreciation um, that we recognize you as community partners of the year. And I would like to invite you all, um, if you'd like to make any um, remarks, uh, it is our pleasure to have you here this evening. Good evening, my name is Kelly Ocho. I'm the Vice President of Operations for Memorial Hermit Southeast and Pearland. Um, I just want to say it's our absolute privilege to partner with you all for the safety and protection of our students in the community. Um, I'd like to just have uh, Dr. Macaluso Davidson say a few words because she's been instrumental um, in this relationship and we're really blessed to have her at Memorial Hermann and um, I appreciate very much all that she does to serve our community as well. So thank you for having us, thank you for recognizing us, and thank you for allowing us um, to work with you for the good of the cause. Um, and so I would just argue that today that really is such an honor and privilege to work with you all and really to raise awareness and bring you to your, your consideration and your attention and your work. So it really is an honor to work as a partner with you this last year and I look forward to being able to talk to you some more about the community partners. Thank you. Day, we have a focus on ensuring that each student graduates from high school, college, um, and uh, college or and or career ready. And so we have countless stories of students achieving their personal academic goals. But tonight we have a particularly compelling um, story, and we are thrilled to recognize Victoria Wynn, who's a senior at Pembroke High School. She made a 
perfect, that he repeat a perfect score on the ACT. Her score of 36 is significant and rare. This is less than 1% of the 1.67 million students who take the test earn a perfect score. So, wow. This, this clearly shows City College or University plenty of evidence that she is ready to excel in any post-secondary opportunities. So congratulations to Victoria, her family, and all the wonderful teachers. We appreciate Dr. Lopez, her principal, being here on behalf of all the wonderful educators that have supported her. She has been named a 2021 First Championship Dean's List winner. And first, as you may know, um, means for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. And first robotics teams worldwide select and nominate up to two high school students each year to be Dean's List semifinalists. But similar to the National Merit Scholarship Awards, so those semifinalists then compete for two district or regional championship finalist awards from which only 10 students worldwide are named, are named Dean's List winners. And so the students who earn the first Dean's List award status are truly fantastic examples of student leaders who led their teams and communities to increase awareness for FIRST and its mission. And these students have also demonstrated personal technical expertise and accomplishment um, deserving of this global recognition. And she is the third CCISD student to win this highly prestigious award, and we salute her for this amazing accomplishment. Well done. Thank you, family members, for joining us this evening. Also, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Drake is principal coming, uh, as well as James uh, Job, all things robotics, for coming to support the recognition this evening. We'll go into uh, our community input. The purpose of community input is for the entire board to receive feedback from citizens. The board will hear the public comments but will not respond. Matters brought forth that require a response will be addressed by the superintendent as appropriate. All information received is subject to verification. Community input is scheduled for 30 minutes and has two forms. Those requesting to address the board in advance of the meeting are granted three minutes to address their topics, and those who sign up this evening prior to 6.30 are granted one minute. Public comments regarding items on the board agenda shall be heard prior to public comments regarding 
any topics not on the board agenda. Non-agenda items shall be heard on a first-come, first-served basis. A total of three speakers shall be allowed for each non-agenda item topic. Public comments of non-agenda items extending beyond the 30-minute time frame will be heard after all of the business of the board is conducted. A staff member will monitor the time. The board has requested that no personal names, insults, abusive, or profane language be used. Failure to follow this request may cause the public comment to be terminated. And our first speaker is Mr. Eric Hogue. All right, we will move to Ms. Uh, Kate Schroeder. Next, we will go with Ms. Mandy Ryder. This evening, I have two points to make regarding transparency or the lack thereof in Clear Creek ISD. First, it has been 67 days and 83 days, respectively, since I submitted two Texas Public Information Act requests regarding electronic data. I would like to remind this body that it is the board's responsibility to be informed about open records laws and ensure that district's employees are educated on the requirements of those laws. On both of those points, you are clearly falling short. I was going to help you by reading the open records laws to you, sections 552.001A and 552.221A, but I know only the people at home are actually paying attention to what I'm saying. In short, these laws say the district doesn't get to decide what information is or is not released. The law does. In 
In delegating authority to a government body, voters do not give public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know and what is not good for them to know. And requests must be answered promptly and completely. That means days, not weeks or months. We don't need a legal opinion to agree that over two months on one request and nearly three months on another is not promptly. Unless this district has something to hide, then I expect the superintendent, with the support of this board, to ensure I quickly receive responses to my requests. Second, this past Saturday, July 24th, this board received a summary of a so-called equity audit report. What is an equity audit report? Because this report was discussed at your team building workshop, that means the district has an excuse to hide this report from the public. As everyone knows, equity isn't referring to stocks and bonds. It is a well-known buzzword for critical race theory, a divisive racial ideology that is becoming a cultural cancer across our nation. Supposedly, it was banned in CCISD, but policy is only as good as the body that enforces it. And behind closed doors, it seems this district can't wait to help our new associate superintendent of curriculum implement equity programs and or sneak CRT into our children's classrooms. Equity is not about equality of opportunity, but equality of outcome. We've already seen examples of equity in this district, such as removing the requirement for intermediate school students to pass science and social studies. But does that outcome of being promoted to the next level really help those students or just push them through as quickly as possible? And removing letter grades during the spring of 2020, punishing high achievers. Every student had the same outcome, but at what cost to their education, not to mention their mental health? So what's next? Removing advanced math courses before 11th grade? getting rid of STEM magnets and GT and WAVE programs, introducing bias reporting systems and penalizing teachers who criticize equity framework, paying more money to more consultants to implement these bad ideas. I and many others would like to know what's in the report and why the district is trying to hide it. Going back to the Texas Public Information Act, I expect our requests to be filled promptly, which means no more than 10 business days. The board is supposed to be guardians of public trust, and it's time you act like it. Thank you for your comments. And next, Mr. Jonathan Lucas. And Mr. Lucas, we have you for one minute. Unfortunately, yes, I really wish I took a few extra moments. If you don't mind, John, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sit here. My name is John Delicus. Um, I currently sit as president for our board of directors and exercise south and west of the city. But we all know where Wall Elementary is in Maple Leaf. It's going to make our neighborhood even that more attractive. And you know, we're an older neighborhood. We're built in 79. But the construction, it is killing us. I've been, I've been begging and pleading. Um, there's a lot of unhappy homeowners. I mean, our, our streets are like 23 feet wide. And like the, our neighbors, like Russell Goats and West Dover Park, they're um, 32 feet. Um, the contractor's name, uh, McShane, I believe, is doing the work for a whole elementary. I know I'm running out of time. I'll cut through this really quick. Um, they're parked on both sides of the main artery of our neighborhood, which is Country Lane. Hey, no, it's not Country Lane. It's all over. Um, they're just going to be equipped with going in and out. They're doing three-point turns on the homeowners. Yards, uh, I knocked over mailboxes. Um, you know, we can't do, I know everybody wants to talk, but um, homeowners are not even able to get their trash picked up on Country Lane and the other side. Uh, first responder access is greatly uh, affected. Um, certain city ordinances are being broken as well. I mean, we will want progress, absolutely, but the way it's being gone about, I mean, it, it, it is everywhere. I mean, I, you know, and I'm, I'm begging and pleading, please, there's got to be a solution. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Mr. Lucas, I, I encourage you. I, I know you weren't able to get everything in. Yes, sir. Um, I believe you can email the board. Absolutely. Um, you know, you can, you can find our email address online. Please email us those concerns, and so hopefully we can have those. 
all the way down to that. Thank you, Mr. President. agenda for this public meeting was posted on our district website and did not include any closed session items. No actions were taken by the board at this meeting. The time was mainly split between two topics, response to strategic planning and team operating procedures. The response to strategic planning agenda item included information regarding key focus areas for the coming school year, such as effective first-time instruction and health and safety. The board is tentatively scheduled to receive an update regarding this topic at the September workshop. The topic of the team operating procedures will be turned to the board as an action item as early as the regular August board meeting. The seven hour and 45 minute meeting included approximately 10 minutes relating to a summary of an equity audit report, which was conducted by Perino Management Solutions and commissioned in December 2020 by my predecessor, Dr. Greg Smith. It was discussed at the Lime Street board meeting on December 7, 2020. This past Saturday, July 26, our Deputy Superintendent of Curriculum Instruction made brief remarks regarding the forthcoming report to the board, and as I mentioned, it was about 10 minutes or less. We have not yet received the final version of the report. We hope to receive the final version soon and tentatively plan to place this topic on the agenda for the board workshop or meeting in August. The overview of the findings and recommendations will be provided at that time, and the entire report will be shared publicly. No action is being taken at this time regarding any recommendations that may or will be forthcoming. Staff will communicate clearly and publicly before proceeding with acting on any of the recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for your comment. Um, next, we'll move on to action on closed session items. Do I have a motion for item A, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Bowman. I move. Second that. Thank you, Mr. Larson. We have a second. Do we have any comment? Seeing no comment, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. And the motion carries unanimously. And do I have a motion for item B, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Bowman. I move that the policy committee examine the possible to the policy uh, at its next scheduled meeting that would expand uh, the exception to board policy at the approval for seniors to students who have completed uh, from seniors to students who have completed two years of high school within the district. And do I have a second? I second that. Thank you, Mr. Larson. And I will call for a vote. All in favor? Unanimously, I will say, and I wanted to thank our audience for hanging in there. Um, we had some deliberation, and uh, it, it brought up some some good discussion in regards to you know um, borders and you know um, I, I guess like our, our our students and how we're trying to recognize you know those students that are. Um, they've invested in, you know, CCISD. They've started their career in CCISD and trying to recognize that and see if there's some way that, you know, we can capture that. So, um, wanted to thank everybody for their, you know, deliberations and close session. Um, next, we'll move on to uh, our consent.
nothing else, so that's where I'm shooting. Sanchez, thank you for the second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no questions or discussion, I ask for a vote to accept the consent agenda minus items 12, 20, and 33. All in favor, please raise your right hand.
how much of this contract is lent to be covered by PTAs and other volunteer organizations that are essentially using this as a vehicle to purchase murals for the schools versus how much of this is coming out of the school's general fund. So, uh, I, I guess looking at this breakdown, we've got uh, leader in key donations as 19,410, leader in key district funded as 27,192, 80,000 for bonds 2017, which sounds more like an estimate than a good purchase so far, and uh, in other canvassing department needs, 273,398, and that includes the expended or expected PTA contributions. So, what portion of that? Last category is going to come out of the general funds. Okay. So, so I, I guess kind of adding to, adding together the leader in the district funded and that category that isn't attached to a bond would be about fifty thousand in murals. that budget for as well. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll make the motion. Um, I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation to uh, approve the bond contract of 2022.602 murals and graphic services. Say something very quickly. Um, I, I think this is one of this is one of those instances where throwing a lot of different funding sources into one contract, while it may be easier from a purchasing perspective, from a clarity of what is actually happening perspective and where this money is coming from, it, uh, it the the agenda item as it's written makes it look like we're spending. explanation that uh, PTAs are contributing a large amount of that, uh, leader B, external funding is contributing a large amount of that, and that what's remaining, I presume, is uh, not murals in the sense that you can think of, but as artwork taken on the side of the building that are just wall drawings and especially painting that kind of goes into like um, the size of gyms and things like that that we want and we want to have in our schools. Um, and, and it's a much, much smaller amount. So, I wish there were a more clear way to communicate that to these different departments. So that it, it's something that I don't think I will need to explain a lot, but I don't know if there's a better way to do that in the future. Because when you look at this, you see four different funding sources. 
So maybe I guess to that end, um, uh, like like the president said, uh, we, uh, when we do get to the end of the year, kind of for the first year of this, I would like I guess a, a summary of any murals in the ballpark for this contract that we're using general funds uh, to make that work. So that obviously PTA is going to contribute to the revenue as soon as we're able to get some money out of the uh, maintenance and operations funds. That we have. services to the qualified vendors on the attached list for the period of September 2021, September 1st, 2021 through August 31st, 2023. The estimated contract value for the two-year term is $400,000. Seeing no further discussion, we'll call for the vote. All in favor?
as the project's going to go smoother next year. Well, we can't get that.
expense. It was very expensive. Said great way, that was the dream. I mean, they're all collaborating studies, and the classrooms, I can imagine how much money they make. So, phasing is going to be tricky. We're going to have three phases. We're going to have summer one in 2012. We're going to have the school year 22 to 23. That's phase two. And then the third phase will be the summer of 2023. So, the goal here is to kind of get all the site elements done the first summer so we can finish off that. We're going to have closing dates. Contract will also start building this faculty parking lot and the concrete area for staging and we'll put the storm water detention plan in place next year. With respect to the floor plan, the first phase, not much is going to change. We're going to be pesticide targeted a little bit differently. Concrete will basically be a similar uh, structure. And then it's, it's going to kind of it's maintain throughout the process. They'll do a little bit of work inside the satellite building and start doing some demo in there in case they need some areas for storage. Secondary entry further down on the creek bed in the area. And then the west elevation, so this is the cafeteria and kitchen. And then we'll look at that in the next slide. South elevation and east elevation, these are side views of the cafeteria and kitchen and side views of the kitchen and living room. The next two pages are just programs, uh, spatial uh, sizes, quantities that will hold the classroom. Thank you. 
It's, um, do they currently have two lines for the pickup? I can't remember. I thought it was just one line, if I remember correctly. So that'll be a, that'll be a huge relief. It's right. Yeah. And I and I saw that. This is a better question. 
passion for only honestly, but I mean, we've been we've been putting these collaboration spaces in LA this week, especially for the last several projects. Uh, are we seeing those get pretty good use? I mean, at, at least during COVID, obviously they couldn't, but maybe before that. Space allocations, I think, are on. I'm pretty sure we have more than 16 minutes for each of us. That's a great class for each of our own space. 16 minutes for each of us. Yeah, I think that's right. I, I think that's just a little bad. Yeah. Oh, the total.
Next, we will move on to um, consider a scheduling of public hearing to discuss the 2021-22 budget and proposed tax rate. And before we get into that, I just wanted to recognize our two guests, um, Jeff and Alice Benzai and Jeff Kohlenberg. Um, I wanted to really recognize the job that Alice has performed over the past couple of months filling in for Mr. McLarty. Um, many of you who have met Alice may think she's soft-spoken, but don't be mistaken. <laughs> she has a quiet intensity and tenacity that belies her outside demeanor. Alice's ability to know all facets of the job of the Deputy Superintendent of Business and Support Services was invaluable. In case our audience does not know, the Deputy Superintendent of Business and Support Services coordinates amongst many departments, including but not limited to purchasing, facilities and maintenance, child nutrition, transportation, bond construction, athletics, and the list goes on. This office also oversees our investment and financial reporting and budget preparation, which we'll talk about in a minute. It is a testament that a good leader trains and cross-trains their people. And if Alice is any indication of this, it is comforting to know that we have folks ready to step up and assume those leadership positions in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. simple comment and that it's always a joy to see taxes coming down. Are there any other questions, comments? Seeing no further questions or comments, I will call for a motion to uh, consider scheduling a public hearing to discuss the uh, 2021 
Seeing no further discussion, I'll call the order of the vote. All in favor? Consider approval of the 2021-2022 CCISD health insurance premium contributions. Okay, so tonight we will be asking you to approve a recommendation for our health insurance premium contributions for the 21-22 school year. Um, as a reminder, one of the budget priorities that the board sent this year was to administer competitive salaries to 
I need to set the workshop too, and I know we're going to take longer to set the workshop too, but I didn't just want to make the point that I also made at the workshop, and I know we haven't even really discussed the desalinate increase yet, but I think it's important when any of this is discussed at any level that all of it be taken into consideration because this is a huge impact. Um, and if there were no increase in salinate, we were obviously losing money <laughs> because essentially the, the engineers uh, helped to obtain that money. So I just um, want them to try to stress the importance of everything. recommendation to increase the district's health insurance premium contributions to TRS Active Care by $14 per month to $324 per month for employee-only coverage, $384 per month for employee and spouse coverage, $359 per month for employee and children coverage, and $409 per month for family coverage. Thank you for that motion. Do I have a second?
says here in the, in the slide that this is a 3% salary increase for all employees. Uh, this, so this, this applies to teachers, staff, and administration? Yes, but it does not apply to substitutes. And so it would be on part-time and full-time parents eligible to make that increase. So just wanted to recognize once again the, the job that teachers and staff did last year. Um, you know, phenomenal, went above the, the call of duty in, in the aspect, lots of home runs, things of that nature. And I know last year, um, because of the uncertainty, we weren't able to offer what we um, typically do. So I, I, I'm appreciative of the fact that we're able to come in and get back on track and, and um, you know, take care of our uh, teachers and staff. I also like the fact that we didn't go with our compensation plan. We reward um, the longevity and dedication and service um, to the district. Um, so, you know, in some of those ranges, uh, some of our teachers received actually a 7 Salaries compared to their peers in, in neighboring districts. So, um, kind of, kind of appreciative for that. I'd, I'd like to share some of my thoughts on this with you as well, if you can wait a little bit. And when I first came into this, the comment that we wanted to be able to have uh, compared to our peer districts resonated with me. And immediately I was confronted with uh, the fact that.
so that we can be a blessing for us now. Appreciate that. 